from world news tonight. Migrant crises. Nations shocked as dozens of migrants die in a channel crossing attempt. Holiday surge. Millions on the move in the United States near pre-pandemic levels. New relations. A three-party alliance is set to govern Germany, bringing an end to Merkel-led government. Countdown begins. Happiness and joy as giant balloons fill up the skies on the eve of Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. From the global resources of the Verna Media Network, this is Other Verna World News Tonight. Now reporting from Studio 24 in Colombo, here's Suzanne Shainali. Very good evening and thank you for joining us on World News Tonight. On today's coverage, we start off with the tragic migrant crisis. British and French officials traded blame after 27 migrants died when their dinghy deflated as they made a perilous crossing of the English Channel. At the port of Calais, ambulances stand by as rescue vessels head back out to sea in search of potential survivors. More than two dozen migrants drowned off the French coast Wednesday when their craft capsized as it attempted to cross the English Channel. France's interior minister says four suspected human traffickers have been arrested in connection with the incident. Smugglers routinely charge thousands of euros for a seat on overcrowded inflatable dinghies as they navigate the powerful currents of one of the world's busiest shipping lanes. Earlier, those fortunate enough to have survived their journey were escorted to shore by British authorities. Tensions between France and the UK have mounted in recent months amid an explosion in the number of migrants attempting the perilous crossing. British authorities say more than 25,000 people have arrived illegally via the channel so far this year, triple the total for all of 2020. The UK government is now under increasing domestic pressure to crack down, with London urging tougher action from France to prevent departures. We've had difficulties persuading some of our partners, uh, particularly the French, to, to, to do things in, in, in a way that we think is uh, the situation deserves. But what we want now is uh, to do more together. NGOs are calling for better living conditions and safe passage for migrants who want to leave Europe for the UK. They fear the number of drownings in the English Channel may soon come to rival that of the Mediterranean Sea. Migrants queue to get on buses after accepting an offer from Mexican government to leave a caravan bound for the United States and obtain humanitarian visas to transit Mexican territory. Thousands of migrants in southern Mexico have accepted a government offer to quit a U.S.-bound caravan in exchange for Mexican visas. That's according to officials who on Tuesday night said the migrants accepted a proposal to, quote, begin the process that will allow them to regularize their legal status in Mexico. Haitian migrant Dunel Sinia said he was glad to soon be able to work. We are happy and content. Thank God they will give us papers, a Mexican visa to go to another city and support our family. Thank you very much. The caravan is one of two large groups of migrants, many from Central America and the Caribbean, that left the southern city of Tapachula in recent weeks en route to the U.S. border. The caravan organizer told most of the migrants accepted the government offer and that officials would eventually bust them out of Chiapas and into other Mexican states. But some migrants said waiting for change has been rough. We have been here for five days lying on the floor. Women, men, children, sick people with the supposed promise that they were going to give us a document to be able to transit and finish the procedures we have started in other states. Everything has been a lie. The immigration officials give us no answer and the government says nothing. A Mexican migration official told that an earlier group of migrants from Haiti and Honduras were taken to another state some 620 miles away on Tuesday. Washington has urged Mexico to keep migrants in check as the number of people stopped while attempting to cross the U.S. border has more than doubled this year. The Biden administration has invited Taiwan to do its Summit for Democracy next month, a move that infuriated China, which views the democratically governed island as its territory. In a move that's infuriated China, the Biden administration has invited Taiwan to its Summit for Democracy next month, according to a list of participants published on Tuesday. 
The first of its kind gathering is a test of President Biden's assertion, announced in his first foreign policy address in office in February, that he would return the United States to global leadership to face down authoritarian forces led by China and Russia. There are 110 participants on the State Department's invitation list for the virtual event, which aims to help stop democratic backsliding and the erosion of rights and freedoms worldwide. China and Russia are notably absent. Taiwan's foreign ministry said the government would be represented by its digital minister and Taiwan's de facto ambassador in Washington. China's foreign ministry said it was firmly opposed to the invite. Sharp differences over democratically governed Taiwan, which China considers its own territory, persisted during a virtual meeting earlier this month between Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping. The White House said that while Biden reiterated long-standing U.S. support for the One China policy, he said he strongly opposes unilateral efforts to change the status quo or undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. The U.S. Commerce Department is adding 27 foreign entities to its blacklist of actors that engage in activities that go against America's national security and foreign policy interests. It includes those who have contributed to the military advancement of China and Russia, as well as those who played a role in the development of the Pakistan's missile and nuclear programs. Washington has blacklisted 27 foreign entities for expert control over national security concerns. According to the Commerce Department's Bureau of Industry and Security, the list includes 12 entities from China, as well as Pakistan, Singapore and Japan. It also includes one entity based in Russia. In a statement Wednesday, the Bureau said the entities have been determined by the U.S. government to be acting contrary to the national security or foreign policy interests of the U.S. It explained that eight Chinese entities were blacklisted for their participation in the military modernization of the People's Liberation Army, seeking to acquire U.S. origin items for military application. It will also restrict exports to Chinese producers of electronics that support the modernization efforts of China's military. It also explained that three affiliates of China's Korea Technology Limited, an entity that has been blacklisted in 2009, were included for their role in selling technology from the U.S. and other Western countries to Iran's military and space programs. They're also known to have cooperated with North Korean front companies. The Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology was added for its production of military products for a military end user. The other entities were designated for their participation in Pakistan's ballistic missile program and unsafeguarded nuclear activities. While export, re-export and in-country transfer to these entities will be banned, the entities will also be subject to license denials. The Department of Commerce says these measures will prevent the diversion of American technologies to China and Russia's militaries, highlighting that they will be effectively used to protect U.S. national security. Social Democrat Olaf Scholz announced a deal to form a new governing coalition in Germany that aims to modernize Europe's largest economy, accelerate the green transition and bring the curtain down on Angela Merkel's era. German Social Democrat Olaf Scholz has reached a deal with the Free Democrats and Greens to form a new coalition government. This will be the first three-way federal coalition government for Germany since the 1950s and brings an end to 16 years of Merkel-led conservative government, marking a new era for relations with Europe and the rest of the world. According to a 177-page agreement struck after two months of talks, the three parties want to accelerate public investment in green technology and digitalization, while returning to strict debt limits from 2023 onwards. Merkel leaves big shoes to fill. She has navigated Germany and Europe through multiple crises and been a champion of liberal democracy in the face of rising authoritarianism worldwide. Her critics say she has managed rather than solved problems and leaves her successor tough decisions on many fronts. The alliance, named a traffic light coalition after the three parties' respective colours, has a majority in the lower house of parliament and hopes the government will be sworn in early next month after the parties ratify the coalition pact. It faces immediate challenges, with Germany reeling from the global health crisis and Europe grappling with the fallout from Brexit and a crisis on the EU's borders with Belarus. Let's go into a short commercial break. We'll be back soon with more world news.
welcome back. Israeli Defense Minister signed a landmark memorandum of understanding with his Moroccan counterpart in Rabat, the first such agreement between Israel and an Arab state. It was also the first official visit by an Israeli Defense Minister to the country after the two normalized ties last year. Visiting Morocco officially used to be impossible for Israeli ministers, but since last year's Abraham Accords, they not only fly over, they also sign landmark deals. The one signed by Defense Minister Benny Gantz and his Moroccan counterpart Abdelatif Loudiyi is an MOU, a Defense Memorandum of Understanding. It's not an arms deal or a plan to share intelligence, but a legal and regulatory framework that will make those deals possible in the future, a leap in their security cooperation. This warm-up is yet another blow to the Palestinian Authority, who criticized Arab countries who have signed normalization and peace deals with Israel before that country even made any concession on the creation of a Palestinian state. Israel points to its historic cultural ties to Morocco. Nearly half a million Israelis claim Moroccan heritage. Thousands visit the country every year. Benny Gantz visited the tomb of King Mohammed V, the current king's grandfather, and the World War II monarch who refused to hand over Moroccan Jews to Nazi Germany. A senior French government minister has taken another swipe at Australia and the AUKUS agreement, this time in a talk in Indonesia. For more on this, we have Abhidharana World News Special Correspondent Chetana Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. Chetana. Yes, Janali. Minister of Foreign Affairs John Yves Le Drian was speaking at the Centre of Strategic and International Studies when he was asked about the three-party agreement between Australia, the US and the UK. The deal will see Australia acquire nuclear-powered submarines at the cost of tearing up a $90 billion with the French naval group. The minister was unsparing in his response, saying France felt cheated. He said while Australia was not part of the NATO alliance as the US and the UK were, historically, France and Australia had been allies. He said that the situation between France and Australia was trust crisis, which he contrasted starkly with the US. US President Joe Biden had previously admitted to French counterpart Emmanuel Macron that Australia's handling the issue had been clumsy. Mr. Ludrian said France had returned to a position of trust with US after it provided reasons and made commitments to European defense and to a specific presence. But he remained critical of the AUKUS alliance, saying it pressed a sense of confrontation with the China. Ludrian said France favoured a multilateral approach. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhidharana World News Special Correspondent Chetan and Dharmaratna reporting from Normandy in France. Scott Morrison, Australia's Prime Minister, has introduced to Parliament a contentious bill on religious discrimination that he says will protect people of faith against cancel culture. Let's cross over to Adhidharana World News Special Correspondent Timothy Phillip, who's reporting from Melbourne in Australia for more. Timothy? Yes, Shalami. The bill submitted is seen as a bid to win over religious voters ahead of next year's election and comes amid concerns from some that followers from churches schools and workplaces are unable to express their religious beliefs. Religious freedom has been in the spotlight in Australia for years amid concern from some that the likes of churches, schools and workplaces are unable to express their religious beliefs. In a move seen as targeting religious voters with an election just months away, Prime Minister Scott Morrison said the legislation would protect people who express their religious faith outside of the workplace as long as it does not cause financial damage to their employer. Morrison also said that legislation would also protect Australians who make statements of belief from discrimination laws, but only if those statements do not harass, vilify or intimidate a person or group. The legislation is expected to be put on a vote next week in the lower house, but it is far from guaranteed to pass into law. Back to you, Shanali. All right, thank you. That was Adhidharana World News Special Correspondent Timothy Phillip reporting from Melbourne in Australia.
Ethiopia's Nobel Peace Prize winning Prime Minister has gone to the battlefront after the leader said Mardi Drum might be necessary in the year-long war with rival fighters approaching the capital. Calm in the streets of Addis Ababa. Ethiopia's civil war has not yet reached the capital, but foreigners such as Frenchman Alexandre Lachet are packing their bags. The 900 French people living in the capital have been notified by their embassy. They have to leave now. Most other Western embassies have also urged their citizens to return to their home countries. In recent weeks, Tigrayan rebel forces have advanced through the country, capturing the towns of Kombolcha and Shewa Robit, just 200 kilometers away from the capital. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2019, headed to the front line on Tuesday as he called on Ethiopians to defend their country. Even before the call, these women in the capital were already hard at work for the war efforts. The Tigray People's Liberation Front has been at war with the government for over a year. Once a ruling party, they retreated to the TPLF stronghold of Tigray when they were ousted from power and have now joined the Amuru Liberation Army, another rebel group, as they advance towards the capital. A report from the United Nations earlier this month said civilians have borne the brunt of the violence from both sides, including indiscriminate attacks, rape and forced displacement. As the holidays approach in the United States, healthcare workers on the front lines are seeing a staggering number of patients still arriving at hospitals. Cases have spiked nearly 70% in Michigan, and other states in the Midwest and Northeast continue to see cases climb. This Thanksgiving will be no holiday for the men and women on the front lines of the pandemic. The sobering reality inside ERs and the staggering number of patients still arriving at hospitals is leaving many with a less grateful and more grim outlook. We're looking at two to three times the number of COVID patients that we had going back a month or two. Dr. Justin Skorinsky is at the center of one of the nation's most dangerous COVID clusters as cases spike nearly 70 percent in Michigan. If this state was a country, it would be home to one of the current worst outbreaks in the world. We know that Thanksgiving probably won't do us any favors in terms of the COVID numbers. We're hoping this surge doesn't get so high that we can't handle the numbers here. Threatening to set a pandemic record for hospitalizations, Michigan's governor is now asking the Department of Defense for emergency staffing as the unvaccinated spread the virus. One thing I can say for sure is that if we don't get the majority of the people who are not vaccinated right now, things are going to be much worse. States across the Midwest and Northeast are falling deeper into trouble every day. No doubt we are seeing record levels of cases. We're seeing record levels of hospitalizations. Still, it is safe to travel and get together for the holidays if precautions are taken. Among the most important, knowing what to do if you wake up feeling unwell before a gathering. Tonight, pandemic precautions as so many Americans navigate Thanksgiving with family again. Welcome back and for more news, let's take you around the world in a minute. Although a shadow of its former self since the arrival of the COVID-19 pandemic last year, Bangkok's once bustling Khaosan Road is showing slow signs of recovery nearly a month into its reopening to tourism. Solomon Islanders have defied a government-imposed lockdown and protests in capital for a second day, setting fire to buildings in the city amid an outpouring of disquiet in the Pacific country. The air quality of the Indian capital New Delhi slipped back to a very poor category, a day after it marginally improved to be in the poor category. The quality is again expected to improve after the 27th of November with surface winds. Sweden's Prime Minister-elect Magdalena Andersson tendered her resignation just after she was appointed by the parliament after her budget failed to pass and the junior Greens party left the coalition government. Vietnam and Japan agreed to strengthen their security cooperation and boost their pandemic hit economies. The agreement comes as the Vietnamese Prime Minister held talks with the Japanese counterpart Fumio Kishida in Tokyo.
And finally tonight, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade is back with its iconic floats, balloons, performances and more. The big balloons were blown up on the eve of the 95th annual parade. At the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, massive balloons will fill the air. Along with the sounds of marching bands from all across the country. Marley Watts plays the baritone for an all-girl band from Texas, the Ann Richards Marching Stars. She made the trip with her grandma, Judy Allen. You see, Grandma Judy once marched in the parade, too. Back in 1971. Now, after the pandemic kept them apart last Thanksgiving, they're sharing this, and they're not alone. Last year's parade was downsized with no spectators in a route that measured just one block. This year, the crowds will return along with 28 floats, 15 balloons, 10 marching bands, and one proud grandma. This entire time, I've been telling my bandmates like about how cool it is that like my nana's here and she marched like 50 years ago. I know for a fact I'm going to hear them like shout my name, but yes, I can't. Absolutely, not going to be able to look you at them hear or anything. Us yelling. <laughs> yeah. A Thanksgiving tradition that truly spans generations. In case you have missed any of the stories we aired tonight, you can rewatch by catching us on our YouTube page, youtubecom English. And that's all the news we have for you tonight. Join us again tomorrow with another edition of World News. I'm Suzanne Shinali. Until then, stay safe and have a good night.